keep tearing up. <laughs> it's just about it. screamed right now, <laughs> and I'm not even there. <laughs> now that's inspirational, Natalie. <laughs> I feel inspired today. <laughs> Part two I, are you kidding? I could be here for another <laughs> no. hour. And then I was in top of my class. Uh, there were only two of us, and the other guy was in the hospital. So uh, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> and I always go, he winds up homeless on the street, and it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, now you sound my wife. And you can get off. <laughs> Paul, I cut you off early. What were you going to say? What? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Don't do that to me, Paul. Don't do that to me, man. Thank you. I don't know what got into my head, but I thought, I thought this thought, you know, if I'm working year-round, I might as well get paid year-round. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now, it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hey, Paul. Hey, Jason. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And, uh, you know, by the way, we got to kind of keep things in mind today. Um, and, and so we're, we're probably going to pull back the veil a little bit, but this is, uh, you know, we started our new season of uh, Sweet Talk. We've I got know. a new intro. Um, and so, you know, we got to probably announce ourselves, you know, like who we are because. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah we so, change the intro on that, don't we? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, maybe you start. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Jason Bethalden. I'm the uh, assistant director at Continuing Education Workforce Training and the host, one of the hosts for our talk, uh, Sweet Talk. <laughs> podcast and for our four regular listeners you guys know exactly who we are but we might have a five or or fifth or sixth one listening so we want to make sure they know who we are and obviously i'm the co-host um (laughs) paul dickey the uh video instruction manager and apprenticeship coordinator for construct for continuing education workforce training at isu um and uh this is our beginning of our fourth season yeah, we're into four seasons or started four seasons. So yeah, uh, nice. this was, it's hard to even say that really. I know. Um, so how was your break? My break was good. I good, was, good. Mine, mine was as well. Mine it was, was as well. Well, we got an exciting show today, Paul, um, because we've got a couple, uh, first of all, we got two uh, good guests that I'm really excited to talk to. Um, they kind of uh, work uh, with, they have a very, I'm trying to say, I don't know how to say this, so I'm just going to muddle my way through it, but they have a very important job and they work with very important people. Um, And there's a lot of struggles in the work they do, but there's a lot of victories and uh, we're excited to talk to them today. Uh, We are kind of promoting our construction combine today and our guests involvement in it. But with that being said, let's just jump it off. We have uh, Jimmy Gentry um, and Cliff Cummings. And Jimmy is the district manager of District 6 Probation and Parole. And Cliff uh, is a probation officer here at District 6 uh, Probation and Parole. And Jimmy, just starting off with you, uh, in addition to it, kind of introducing yourself to our listeners, was I fair in saying that you're, you're, you, you've got a unique job as, the, uh, as a probation, working in probation and parole? First of all, thanks, Jason and Paul, for for having us on this uh, podcast. We're excited to promote the Combine and uh, talk a little bit about it. And yes, uh, I would say our jobs are very unique, um, very stressful at times, but also equally rewarding. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. There's there's some struggles when you work with people and there are victories and, and hopefully you have more victories than you do struggles. So now, uh, Jimmy, you're the district manager there at district six. So you kind of get to, uh, you're in, you're the trail boss, so to speak of the whole rodeo show there, right? Yeah, that's correct. A little bit of my history. I started as a correctional officer at Pocatello women's correctional center in 2005. Mm -hmm. Um, I became a sergeant up there in 2007 and then decided that I would see what community corrections was about and transferred down to District 6 as a probation officer in 2008. I've been uh, worked as a probation officer for a lot of years, and I've been the district manager here since 2018. Very good. And, and Cliff, you're a probation officer with District 6, and uh, so welcome to the show. And um, you you get to live in the middle of it every day, so... Um, tell us, introduce yourself, uh, if you would, please. 
Yes, my name is Cliff Cummings. I've been a probation officer for quite a while, and I've supervised a variety of caseloads. So I get to meet all kinds of interesting people with different uh, needs. And uh, I'm really excited. I was involved with, with the uh, building combine last year, and I, it's very excited to do it this year also. Yeah, excellent. So kind of let's just talk about that for a little bit on the construction combine. And just real quick plug, uh, March 30th and 31st this year. Um, and registration is open till March 15th. And so we'll have it in the descriptions here, but be sure to check it out. If you're interested, want more information, go to constructioncombine.org and you spell that all out. But anyway, how did you, how did district six probation and parole kind of hear, get involved with the construction combine? I'll, t- I'll take that. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've only been doing this three seasons. Uh, you know, Jimmy, I don't, we don't know what we're doing yet. So sorry. sorry. No, you guys are good. Um, so this will be our fourth year uh, working with the construction combine. Scott Stevens uh, initially contacted uh, district six probation and parole and presented this program to our district and was kind enough to ask if we had uh, some of our clients, some of our population that this might be helpful for and that we could hook our clients in with potential employers. Um, from the from the first year that we've done this until now, I've seen remarkable improvements, organizational. Uh, a shout out to Scott for all the hard work he does. This is truly a, a monumentous, monumentous feat, uh, pulling all this together, working with different agencies and our uh, our local high schools to to put this uh, presentation on. Um, Cliff is this will be Cliff's second year. The first year we um, we did this, which was four years ago now, I didn't really understand as a district manager what the construction combine was, and I targeted. Uh, some of our population that I thought may be, uh, may be able to reap the benefits of this program and maybe get a job in construction. Lessons learned through the first four years is probation and parole is very fluid. Um, we, we spend a lot of time planning this uh, event. And from our point of view or from the way we look at things, our clients change within that 60 to 90 days. Uh, some for very good reasons, they become employed, they're stabilized in the community and they have a job. Some for unfortunate reasons, they may have uh, violated their probation or parole and uh, be sitting before a judge or the parole commission or in jail. Uh, so from a very rocky start from the first construction combine to now, we've had to adapt a little bit too on our clients, uh, the clients that we recommend and that we put, uh, you know, we use for this valuable resource. Mm -hmm. Cliff has a specialized caseload uh, and has had it for three years now, Cliff. Yeah. Um, Yeah. He, 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 his general caseload is the hall tribal caseload. Um, We've recently and again, I'll let you talk about this because you know more about it, but we've recently uh, had a treatment court sprout up in uh, in our tribal region. And these, these individuals lack a lot of resources that even people that have the same issues but live in the Pocatello area, um, they, ha- they struggle more with employment. So I think it's, it's been a good fit and it will continue to be a good fit. Cliff, I'll let you talk a little bit more about what you're doing out there uh, on the reservation and and how this program helps. All righty. Well, thank you. Well, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm very excited about this. Um, I've had a number of people in the last year's program. It, um, it was very interesting because I would go out there with them and just gauge and engage in conversation with them and, and um, how they like the program. And It was really quite amazing. Many of them were not exposed to that kind of construction and um, were very excited that they could actually utilize some of the training that they received in in not only employment, but also around their own house where they had, they didn't know, um, you know, just basic, basic maintenance around the house. 
So um, this year, I'm, I'm excited to introduce more people to that program and continue to expand the numbers of people that I can put in there. Um, the feedback was really, really good last year, and the people were very excited. You know, you guys have kind of both alluded to, but, you know, the construction combine sort of has that twofold mission, right, is to get people, help people find jobs. I mean, ultimately, that's really what we want. Um, and it's the purpose of the construction combine is to help people find those jobs. But then you alluded it to just a second ago, Cliff, is that the, the, the addition is to, to teach skills. And, and granted, you know, what do you learn in two days? You're not an expert at anything in two days, but sometimes just getting that initial introduction into, you know, a construction trade or a specific skill, uh, whether it's plumbing or whether it's uh, framing, whether it's roofing, siding um or even uh you know we have equipment uh heavy equipment operation introduction component to it um you know that that in and of itself you know is teaching a skill and giving someone um the opportunity to maybe learn more and develop that skill so uh, i think from my perspective you know and you talked about this too uh jimmy was you know how many different community elements are involved in the construction combine and and that, and I'm assuming that kind of meshes right into your your goal with at probation and parole, is to give people uh, a connection back to their community in healthy ways, and also giving them the opportunity to, to contribute to the, their community. So, you know, I can see where that could be a real natural fit. Yeah, Paul. Well, I, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. So, a lot of people, you know, we only know probation officers officers roles or duties through movies and tv yeah. and you know <laughs> so in those fictitious representations of of them there's always an acrimonious relationship between the parolee and the parole uh, what exactly do you does a, par a parole officer do um because you refer to the, the your um clients as clients so what what is, is exactly that you do for them well i'll start off uh, answering that with it's not like you see on TV. Um, our jobs are a, a unique, com a unique com combination in law enforcement that doesn't exist uh, in any other division because we're not looking to make arrests. We're looking to help our clients succeed. Um, and, and kind of going on your question, Jason, is one of the underlying um, good things about the combine is it lets us get our clients out in front of the public and kind of try to erase some of those stigmas that exist and, and knock down some of those barriers that just naturally exist because you're a convicted felon. Right. Uh, Paul, back to you. Probation officers do a lot of social work. Um, we have the badges, we have the guns, we have all the, all the gear, and we do make arrests uh, when it's warranted but that's not the primary mission of our department. Um, you know, our prisons are overcrowded, uh, have been. We have, we have prisoners out of state currently that uh, we're trying to bring back into the state of Idaho. Um, the most cost-effective way for the public, the taxpayer to deal with these clients and to get them on the right track and make them pro-social people is through probation and parole. Um, and we don't, we don't generate success by being heavy handed or arresting somebody, uh, for not following the rules. Uh, a lot of these people, most of these people, I would say, Cliff, uh, you can agree or disagree, have underlying factors and trauma in their lives that mm -hmm. led to, led them to where they are today. And so the, the stigma or the stereotype of felons, people on probation or parole, that's a huge part of our job. I would say most of our job is breaking down those stereotypes, uh, making these clients self-sufficient, successful, and uh, productive members of society. Well, and, and, and go ahead, Cliff. Sorry. Okay. I was just going to say, and Paul, how we do this on a, a frequent basis is we act as referral agents. So we get to know the clients. We refer them to the appropriate agencies so they can start dealing with some of the trauma-based issues that they may be having or some of their decisions, whether it's, you know, who they're hanging out with, employment opportunities, further education, GEDs, 
of course, drug and alcohol counseling. We try to make all those referrals so they can, you know, utilize some of those um, learning experiences to make better decisions in the future. Also remove barriers, um, like Mr. Gentry just said, is we try to get those barriers down and, and let them kind of move forward with their lives the best they can. Do you, do you find that some of your clients, um, you know, because they've been incarcerated and they and they're they they're released on probation, that you know that they feel that they have everything going against them rather than having opportunities? Well, that's frequent happens, especially people that come out of the institutions. Um, that's people have done a long time in the prison systems, and that's where that parole officer slash probation officer needs to be really intuitive with what's going on in that person's life and and not overwhelm them with things that they need to do. We just start working on it, get them referred to the appropriate agencies. So, and, and it's some of, some of it's very basic. It could be housing. It could be food. You know, how do they go to um, get food stamps, that kind of stuff. Sure. So we, we go, we start real basic and try to move up from there. I guess if they're, re- if they're released and they don't even have any sort of uh, the, you know, the basic ways of getting food, shelter, and so forth. That's just, again, that's just setting them up to fail. Uh, I guess that's the first thing that you have to address before they even enter back into, I I guess, society at that point. Is that correct? That's correct. And we have a reentry program and and that's coming online. And we've we've worked very closely with housing resources and food resources to try to eliminate some of those, like I said, those early barriers right on the front. And, And then, you know, and that's, also with drug and alcohol counseling, if that's their issues, or mental health counseling, or any other needs that they, we try to refer them to, to get, you know, the help they need to help them be successful. And I, and I think I, I'm assuming, but I, you know, I think the other side of that coin too, is that um, the individuals that are coming out, or uh, especially if they've been institutionalized or are placed on the probation, I think uh, sometimes as uh, citizens who may not have a uh, touch uh, that's part of uh, our society, the, uh, you know, the criminal side, have this idea that criminals want to remain criminals, so to speak, right? That you always have to be up against, uh, you know, bucking the system or finding the angle. And that's not true. Uh, you know, people want, want you know, they, they are tired of the consequences they get. And um, they, they, for the most part, I'm, I'm assuming you deal with people who uh, want your help um, and don't necessarily view you as an enemy, though that happens too, I'm sure. Well, they have to be held accountable for some of the right. decisions they make. Right. And th- there is that. But there are corrective measures that can be done without going back to the you know, jail or institution. There's things right. we can have in play to help them and assist them into seeing the light, if you will, <laughs> working their way into our more pro-social activities and behavior model. model. Do you find that they have more success if they have, um, say, outside community is more accepting of them than if they are are kept at arm's length from the community when they come back in? 100%. And that's, uh, you know, breaking down that stigma. But I'll I'll take it even further. Um, We've learned, uh, at least I've learned over the years, Cliff probably always knew this, but (laughs) <laughs> we're not a we're not a standalone beacon in Pocatello, Idaho, either. Uh, we have, you know, like the construction combine, ISU in general, all our other community partners. Uh, everybody who gets involved and helps us break down that stigma and helps offer assistance, educational, drug and alcohol, uh, housing, all of those things come together to give a client a better chance of success. Um, I often try to put myself on the other side of the desk uh, and you can't see that right now, but I'm sitting at a desk uh, because that's where our clients usually are when we're interviewing them and talking to them. And if I struggled with uh, an addiction issue or mental health issues and was incarcerated or had done a lot of time in prison, I always think of how easy it would be to go back to that addiction because Sometimes, you know, I've, I've also worked in the prisons. Prison's not a, a good place to be, but it's a safe place to be. You don't have to make those daily decisions on how to get on with your life, how, how to meet your basic needs. And so just the over, if you think of it that way and the overwhelming task we're asking these clients to do coming out of prison and 
jumping on the rat race with the rest of us. Uh, that's why we have so many issues. So right. it, it really does take a village to, to help these, uh, these people out. Yeah. You know, I was just, I, I was thinking uh, just last year, um, we had a, an individual who uh, came over um, and I think that I'm, I, I, I'm a little fuzzy here, but to, so just forgive me, but they came over during um, set up and were there on the day of the event actually as a participant, but they'd come over the previous night to help us set up. And, you know, I, I it just, um, for me, what it, what impressed me was the individual's willingness and motivation, um, desire, uh, you know, to get involved, to help, to engage, to be a part of the, the process. Um, that individual could see kind of what was happening and and got excited about it. And I think, um, you know, talking about the construction combine and going back to a point that you made very early on, Jimmy, is that that construction combine is about bringing so many different facets of the community. And I think what was neat, you know, as, as an organizer or as assistant to the organizer of the construction combine, you know, you see uh, there is that underlying, if people can understand what this means and the involvement it takes and the benefit it has, uh, you know, that's what you really want people to see. And, and here this individual showed up and within 15 minutes had already connected into, wait a minute, there's a bigger thing going on here than just putting up tents and fences and stringing, um, you know, hose all over the place. So, you know, I think that's something interesting for me that sticks in my memory was, was here was an individual who was cut, who picked up right away that this was a bigger, bigger thing than just doing community service, so to speak. Well, Jason, if I can just piggyback on that just for a second, because I know that person, oh, um, no. the rest of the people that were there that that I referred or, and that volunteered to do this, you know, giving them a hard hat, giving them a vest, they became part of a, a small community there only for two days, you know, but it, it meant a lot to them. And so then they after that, they talked about it frequently. Yeah. Well, and let so, them know that it meant a lot to us, especially me. So you bet. it was a two way street on that for sure. Right. Uh, and, and so we're excited. We're, I think we're excited for the construction combine this year as it comes up in March. Um, and, and I know you guys have the struggles, but, but I, I also know that uh, anyone who does have the opportunity to, to participate in that construction combine will find more than just uh, a new way to, to, to cut a board with a saw or drill a hole or run a pipe. Um, there's a bigger picture on that. And that was the timer, but before we're done, I don't want that to be the last. I, I guess our guess, guess if there's anything else well, you guys want to add on. I, I, I just, either one of you, uh, Jimmy or, or Cliff, uh, without naming names, maybe one of your best success stories? Cliff, I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, uh, so many. I mean, there's yeah, a lot right. of them. But I mean, one that comes to mind was involved in the construction combine. He actually completed my pro or the drug court program um, is doing very well um, in holding employment now in the construction field and has not reoffended or been involved back in the system. So what a great success. He has a family now um, doing well. And that's what we're really looking for. And that's our that's our wish. That's what right. we want. Right. No, that's, that's great. Fine. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, that was the timer. And I, I, you know what, you guys, that was kind of a fun conversation. I think we kicked it off on construction combine, but we got into the, the bigger goal of probation and parole. I kind of enjoyed that. Yeah. We, we might, I, I, I have way more questions. I know. I was just thinking, um, we might need to do this again, but, but, uh, on a different, well, off a different springboard, right. With a little bit more intentional. So, um, but definitely appreciate, uh, appreciate what you had to say today. Um, and I hope our listeners, Heard that too. And we want to say, if you're at all interested in getting involved in the construction combine, there are three ways to do so. You can be a participant. Um, all you need to do is be willing to give up two days and uh, from whatever else you're doing and um, learn and be willing. And uh, I, I pretty much will tell you that if you come looking for a job and you show up on time and, and you put the energy in to learn, you will have a job offer by the time you end that the second day. That's for sure. 
Uh, there's contractors. Uh, we always are looking for contractors to help us teach the skills. And uh, if you just want to sponsor the event, uh, you know, pick up the water tab, you know, <laughs> pick up the lunch bill or um, help us with any of the other types of things, please be sure to reach out to us. Uh, it, you want to contact Scott Stevens. Uh, and the best way is at constructioncombine.org.org, constructioncombine.org. It's all spelled out. Um, or you can look us up on CETrain um, at isu.edu, at cetrain.isu.edu. Um, or you can email us there too at cetrain at, at isu.edu. So, Paul, did I get everything? I, I think you got everything, maybe just uh, missing the phone number. Oh, and gosh. Then, uh, it's been and four then, weeks. And, and, and do, yeah. th does the community work with the probation <laughs> officers? at all i mean do employers sometimes come to you and saying hey are do you have uh, people that might be interested in employment uh if so how do they reach out to you guys so we yes they do they they frequently uh reach out to us we have several staffing agencies that email us i don't know cliff what we say almost daily yeah um with the economy right now uh kind of like what jason said if you want a job you can get a job and employers are the ones searching for people, which is great for us uh, in a lot of sense. When the, when the economy's down and jobs are scarce, uh, our clients seem to be the, the ones that have a difficult job or a difficult time finding uh, employment. But yeah, we have all, we have all sorts of uh, employers just reach out to POs on an individual basis too and say, Hey, I'm hiring for this. Uh, can you email it to the rest of your staff? And we we get the word out and and get our clients uh, applying for those jobs. Very excellent, good. excellent, very good. All right. Well, Paul, you challenged me earlier, so let's see if I can do it. If you want to call us um, and you'd like to get a hold of us, and maybe we can help you get in contact with whoever you need to, you can do it at two zero eight two eight two three three seven two. Yeah, got it right, Paul. And. Uh, <laughs> So there, I won the challenge today, man. I got it off. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, yes. Thanks to all of our audience for being there and supporting us. Be sure to follow us on wherever you get your podcast. And thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. 